name is uh, Mario Masugu. Uh, I am a family man and a founding member of the People's United Democratic Movement, known as PUDEMO, founded in 1983. I live a life of uh, running from the state securities. I believe in the fundamental human rights of everybody. I believe that all have a right to live a life within a democratic society. Yeah, we are busy back home. As you know, there have been national elections in Swaziland, which Pudamo and me believed they are not elections but selections because political parties are not allowed to participate. But uh, that is behind us now. We are looking forward on what to do. We are preparing for our conference as PUDEMO, looking forward to where we go after this. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, welcome to Denmark. Welcome to Copenhagen. And welcome to DIPD, the Danish Institute for Partisan and Democracy. And may I add, welcome to the world of Danish politics at a time when it's as vibrant as it ever is. Right now, there's about 4,000 candidates competing uh, in the local elections. Uh, and uh, all the major national parties are, of course, represented. And then we also have a host of local lists. The local lists are interesting in that they are truly local. So they represent people from a municipality who thinks that a given issue is not being dealt with by the national party. And that's, that is what makes them interesting. Thank you. As long as you can have 25 people uh, signing up for you as a candidate, you are able to run at a local election. So the entry barrier is very low. And that means that also sometimes uh, people who they have a very, very specific political agenda they choose to run. So for instance, we have parties who have a very anti-immigrant policy that runs. We have parties that would like to make cannabis legitimate. So we have sometimes lists, non-partisan lists, who have a very narrow and a very specific political agenda. In, in Denmark, we have obviously, since we have two levels of governments, we also have two uh, electoral formulas. But they are pretty similar in the sense that they are both proportional systems trying to enhance the number of interests that are being represented in, in the uh, elected bodies. My name is Miriam Bichet. Uh, I live in Egypt, Cairo. Um, that's part of North Africa, and I work as a financial manager for a British company. Um, I'm a founding member and a, a volunteer with the Social Democratic Party of Egypt. Um, so I work after working hours in the party. So the type of uh, political problems we face in Egypt is that people are very skeptical of political parties. They haven't seen any political party so far that is very keen on getting the, the rights of the people and getting them a better life. So if you tell them I'm from a party, they right away uh, they shut down. They don't want to listen to what you're saying. When they asked us to come, in, to, come to Denmark to see this, it, I thought it would be a good opportunity to come back with all this information to Egypt. And it will give us some light in how to uh, connect to people on the streets, how to connect to people and get them to be convinced with our ideas, um, etc. Political parties in Denmark are financed through two sources. Uh, obviously, uh, or naturally, party members pay uh, a small due, monthly uh, due normally, for being uh, a party member. But then there's also some funding through how many votes a party gets. Parties can also receive private donations. There's one simple rule, and that is if the, the donation exceeds 20,000 Danish kroners, then the party has to make public who has donated uh, the money. Our 
Protection Partners in Denmark or the Social Democratic Party of Denmark, actually. They've been a very great support in terms of training uh, our people. Cairo or Egypt has not had a lot of political exposure in the sense that people have not gone into politics in the last 30 years. Um, so just recently, after the revolution, people started you know, wanting to join political parties so that they make a difference within the country. Um, so what happened was, um, when people started joining, they didn't have any background, any political background, etc., etc. So what the Danish Social Democratic Party did with us is that they came over, they sent out people to train us on various aspects. My name is Bjarne Goreiden. Uh, I'm the Danish Finance Minister uh, and I'm elected for Parliament for the Danish Social Democrats. Basically, I'm campaigning for my, my party colleagues uh, at the local election. Every major politician in my party, and a, a lot of them are government ministers, are traveling the country uh, to, to appear at events, to do street campaigning uh, and, and different public, uh, public discussions with local candidates, well, to help them to attract attention and and put a national political perspective on this election that we consider to be quite important. My name is John Snedeker and I'm chairman for the party called Social Democrats here in the city council in Esbjerg. In this local election I think we are about nine or ten uh, parties. Uh, I think it's uh, nine parties and uh, one list we have the mayor now for 20 years and uh, I think in every society you, you need change if uh, the same persons, the same way of thinking have been there for 20 years. I think the society needs new thinking. Now it's just one day uh, to the election, it's tomorrow as a matter of fact. So I can feel it, uh, a place in my stomach, it's very, very exciting. Um, all the day today people have told me that it's very very close if it's going to be me who's going to be the next mayor or the mayor uh, is going to continue my expectations is to see firsthand how people react in the elections how the actual elector goes and, and you know puts in you know their vote and in, into the ballot uh, what are the age groups uh, are they women or men mostly um, elderly or younger people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's what I want to see mostly. Each voter will, a week before the election, receive a postcard with an address on it. And this is the address of a public library, a city hall, a school, and uh, that is a voting station where this specific voter should go vote. And in each municipality there are several places where you can vote, but each voter can only go to one place very close to, to uh, your home. <laughs> you can either vote today or you can vote in beforehand okay. and then uh, it's put into oh, envelopes the like this. Yeah. So this is also a part of the election and yeah. I think uh, around 2,000 people in Gladsaxe uh, has voted in beforehand because mm. they were not able to or they did, didn't uh, want to go here on the specific day so that you can do it in beforehand. Yeah. So these are votes? Yeah, these are votes. They they will be a part of the counting tonight at eight o'clock, and they have been checked yesterday that all the people there were allowed to vote. And we put it down in in the machine here, and you can see the statistic here. On this place, uh, we are going to have we have three thousand six hundred uh, uh, voters here in this place, and until now we have uh, one hundred twenty. Uh, three. Yes. True. So you've got all the information in your hands? Yes, yeah. we have. Yes, we have. You yes. can tell at yes. 2 o'clock how many people have voted. Yes. yes. And, uh, we can, yes. yes. What you are expecting. In uh, national politics, uh, Denmark uh, see one of the highest participation rate in, uh, rates in the world. At the last election in 2010, we had a we had 88% of the, the electorate participating in uh, in the election, and that's an extremely high number, comparatively speaking. It, at the municipal level, uh, we do see more European, even American, participation rates. We see uh, a participation rate uh, between 50 and 60 percent, with a very, very worrying around 40 percent participation rate for the youngest uh, voters. So, at the moment, we are a little nervous that some of the voters 
they might no longer think that local politics is that important. One of the reasons could be that the political debate is uh, sometimes very consensual and it can be difficult to see the differences between the different parties. So my guess would be that at, the, uh, at this election at, at, and forthcoming elections, uh, the political parties uh, would and should uh, try to um, tell more about uh, the differences between each of the political parties. I am Trine Henriksen and I am a member of the Red Green Alliance and I'm a member of the City Council in Gladsaxe and I work as an environmental chemist. It's only a part-time job to be a politician in the city councils. Uh, only the mayor is paid for full-time. So I have my uh, civil job uh, besides the politics. I expect to be elected because I am the, the number one candidate for the Red-Green Alliance. Yeah, clock is 20. Og valghandlingen skal til at afsluttes. Og øh, jeg skal spørge, om der er flere vælgere, der ønsker afstemning. Der er en i buret. Der er en i det ved vi. Jeg går lige ud og råber de andre steder. Er der flere vælgere, der ønsker at afgive stemme? It's actually a group of civil servants at uh, the municipality who is um, responsible for counting the votes. But they need help and uh, they uh, have a bunch of people helping them. And typically they ask the political parties uh, to send a few people each to help count the votes. Well, one of the advantages of having people of different reports and observation in the room counting uh, votes is that they can check each other out and therefore there's no cheating, no fraud, because uh, they are uh, keeping an eye on each other. So you would see people of very different political orientation actually working together in, uh, in counting the votes. When I was a child, I was also uh, active in the pupils' uh, organizations and also in the, the unions for young people when I was young. So I've been active for a very long time. Youth politics and uh, youth organizations are pretty important in Danish politics uh, for these two reasons. Uh, the first reason, of course, is that uh, young people get socialized uh, into what is a political party and how do you behave and what do politicians do and so forth. And secondly, uh, youth organizations also provide a lot of uh, hardworking people when come election times. I mean, posters need to be put up, uh, brochures need to be handed out, uh, etc. And that is normally done by, by people in the youth organizations. Voters are beginning to choose very late. In fact, we are seeing that uh, up to 40% of the voters are not decided until they are in the voting booth. So, I mean, it's, it's not even hours before they go. I mean, it's when they're actually voting that they decide who to vote on. To me, the most surprising outcome of this election was that the participation rate was actually that high. I mean, the participation was through the roof compared to what we have expected. And that is, that is I mean, a good, I, to me, it's a good sign that we have a healthy democracy that can still engage people. After the, one, the nine days I spent here in Denmark during the study tour for you know, local elections, I would say the thing that I come back with is consensus. Make more consensus amongst political parties. I often use the picture of that in our business, throwing a bomb into the river may actually change the course of the river, but it may also destroy the entire system around it. But throwing 
a lot of small stones over a long period of time into the river can make the course of the stream change in the right direction in a controllable manner. I have not come here to pick and paste, so to speak. But the experiences that we get from developed countries go back home and see how it suits us. There is an African uh, uh, saying that uh, birds build their nests with feathers of another bird. And another one that says a good stick is picked up or cut from far away places. And to me, I thought I'll come back with a good stick from this conference.